Welcome back, Hive Mind. This is Shalazar with Hive Mind Gaming coming at you with another Gloomhaven video. And all right, so we're on our next episode. So let's go ahead and do a city encounter. All right, while enjoying your customary post adventure drink at the Sleepy Lion, you notice something weird going on with the lamps in the bar. Your first thought is that it is your imagination. But after staring at the lamps intently, you see they are flickering in and out. Tech lamps? As opposed to normal gas burning ones? <laughs> Wait, tech lamps? Really? Uh, have been known to be a bit unreliable. Well, I guess there is a tinkerer, I guess. So uh, that makes sense, I guess. Uh, as if. On cue, the lamps suddenly go out completely, leaving the room pitch black. Alright, so we can offer to fix the lamps. It shouldn't be too hard with a bit of techni technical know-how. There is a tinkerer in the, in the group. Uh, take the opportunity to steal some valuables from drunk patrons in the dark. Alright, so we're, we're, we're supposed to be being, we're supposed to be good guys here. So, and also with these city encounters and uh, uh, road encounters, certain things do go in your way better if there is a certain class in the, in the group. And we do have a tinkerer in this group, so we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, that gives us two reputation. Reputation is great because reputation uh, gets the... Uh, the price at the merchant uh, will go down the higher your reputation. So your items in the merchant will uh, cost less. So that's a good thing. All right. So next we need to figure out what adventure we want to go on next. We've got the Magma Pit. We've got the Inox Encampment. We've got the Crypt of the Damned. And I don't think we have anything in here, do we? No, we don't have anything in there. All right, so let's go do... Let's go do the Inox Encampment. And for a road event. As you walk down a dirt path, you see a hard-looking mercenary sitting in a patch of grass. He nods as you pass. Hey, friends, he says. There's something off about, about his tone, though. I don't suppose one of you might be willing to pa uh, part with a stamina potion, would you? I'm headed toward Gloomhaven, but I've just came such I, I've just come such a long way, and I'm not feeling too good about the stretch I have left. With a clank of his sword, sword sheath against his armor, and a loud groan, the man stands up. I'll pay you well for it. Uh, let's see. Hey, mm, yeah, we'll sell him a stamina potion. All right, ten gold collective. All right. So now we got to decide, which I guess we'll just go ahead and split it. Uh, we'll we'll take it off of him because he typically has more cards. This merchant wants to make an example of some caravan raiders. Yeah, seems reasonable enough. For the right amount of money, almost anything can be made reasonable. You enter the Dagger Forest and begin to track down the encampment using Jixera's crude map. It is well hidden, but following the signs outlined on the parchment, you find a dense cluster of huts in a small clearing of the forest. All that's left is to head in and make that requested example. All right, let's see. Loot no gold piles or chest chest tiles during this scenario or have three or fewer total cards in your hand and discard at the end of the scenario. That's probably going to be easier. But I think we're going to do that instead. 
All right, never allow your current hit point value to drop below. There's no way. Uh, cause a trap to be sprung or disarmed on your turn. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, let's see. Uh, Inox Encampment, kill a number of enemies equal to five times the number of mercenaries. All right, so there's two of us, so they, we only need to kill ten. And then indigenous loot no gold piles oh, okay that's uh for him and neutralizer yep okay all right uh let's see all right we're just gonna go ahead and play through this
push your way into the back cave, only to be faced with a half dozen crying, screaming Inox children. You have little opportunity to contemplate the implications of this development, however, as you find yourself also staring down the bows of several Inox archers. You
running through the forest, fleeing the smell of burning flesh, you now find more than enough opportunity to contemplate your actions. All right, so <laughs> I, I couldn't help myself. I had to go and loot stuff. So, yeah. Tinker didn't get his. Man, that brute. That brute, though. I don't know why the internet thinks he's so bad. some other more intelligent force behind them if you can fight your way in and grab the biggest diamond you can find I will give you a considerable reward now leave me in peace Jack Sarah's two massive Inox bodyguards step forward directing you to leave the manor outside contemplating your new task you hear a small voice behind you She's not looking for profit, you know. You turn around to see a female quattro step out of the alley beside Jack Sarah's house. She's clad in dark leather armor and holds a conspicuous contraption full of whirring gears and topped with a conical metal piece connected to a tube. Archie's city guard, she says, introducing herself. I know I don't exactly look the part, but if anyone isn't what they appear to be, it's that Valrath you've been talking to. Sure, she's a merchant, but she's up to something far more sinister. She's been trying to overthrow the military in Gloomhaven for as long as I've been here. And we're all very curious about what her current machinations are. Look, you can go do her bidding like a good little puppy if you want. But if you'd rather actually help this town keep the peace and not get overrun by the wilds, I have a different idea. We'll get to the bottom of Jexera's plans and expose her for who she really is. All right, so I got 15 gold each, plus one prosperity and four XP. Nice. Opens up the diamond mine, Gloomhaven warehouse. Both of them are really close to leveling. Let's go see. After moving four or more hexes on your turn, add plus one attack to your next melee attack this turn. Nice. I think, though, I think he needs the helmet. Oh, crap. He's already got a helmet. Son of a gun. Well, crap. Now he's got two helmets. All right, well, let's sell one back because I'm a dummy. Well, that was five wasted gold. <laughs> oh, well. All right, let's see. What does he have? All right, he has a potion. He has a helm. Guess re re equip it. And then he has boots. He doesn't have anything for his chest, which is the only thing. Let's see, hide armor or leather armor? Hmm. Both of those are really good, actually. I almost want that, though. I would buy that. Yeah. 
in. He doesn't have, oh yeah, for sure a shield. All right, I think that's it for him. And let's see, what does he have? Oh wow, he got rid of the... The stamina potion completely. Wow, I don't think I've ever done that in the board game. I just thought it was used up for that turn. It's gone permanently. Wow, all right. Okay, well, that's that was inter that's interesting. All right, let's see. He's already got boots. I don't know if the wing boots are that important on him. Like each time I used it in that last scenario, I was thinking that it was the plus two speed. That's all right. We'll we'll keep going. Now that may not be a bad idea for him to give him extra protection. And that's probably not a bad idea, but that's two-handed. He's already got that. I think that might be his next purchase. All right, what does he have? Oh, okay, yeah, it's just telling me I got the minus, the extra two minus ones. So let's uh, do a city encounter. Please, something of interest, sir. The words came through a chittering, chitters and hisses. You turn your head toward an al alley in the ward of scales to see a harrowed dressed in crude robes and, and a mask. It holds out a piece of parchment. Something for sirs? Very powerful. Just five gold. You can see the parchment has the design for something on it, but still... You recognize this harrower. It is known for trading in disreputable goods. You can you can't know where this where that parchment came from, and if anyone saw you dealing with this creature, well, they might get the wrong idea. Uh You know what? Let's deal with it. Ooh, Wand of Infernos. Let's go check that out. What does the Wand of Infernos do? Okay, where's the Wand of Infernos? Oh, there we go. During your turn, create fire. Oh, interesting. I don't believe I need it on either one of these two characters, but that is really cool. Well, we barely had enough for that five gold. Interesting. All right, uh, let's see. So where do we want to go? We could go there. Because that's got bandits, cultists. And let's see... He needs to kill bandits and cultists. Lingering woods. Yeah. I don't know where that's going to be. All right. So let's go do this one. You come across a group of brow beaten Inox trudging down the path in, a op in the opposite direction as you. Some are pulling carts laden with various miscellany, mostly furs and crudely crafted goods. The rest have armloads of much of the same. It is obvious that this is everything the Inox have. 
their lives worth in their arms and wagons. They are all covered in what appears to be soot. The shaman at the head of the group calls to you. The beast awakens. The mountain is aflame. Beware you do not anger it. Looking to the horizon, you can see black smoke rising from a far off peak. So we can aid the Inox with what they are carrying or ignore the shaman's ramblings. I don't believe I want to ignore a shaman. Uh, at the start of the scenario, scenario, discard two cards. That sucks. But ten collective gold. All right. Bandit Commander's proclamations of a gloom do not sit well in your stomach as you search the bend in the still river. Something here holds an interest for these maniacs. You are somewhat surprised to find the ruins of an ancient crypt half covered in moss and ivy. The history of this place is old and dark. With no other information to go on, you head down into the depths. Whatever these supposed bandits are up to, you're determined to find out. Even after you stumble across a large group of them, along with some reanimated dead at the bottom of the stairs. We kill a monster during this scenario by causing at least four more points or never allow your current hit point value. Oh, Jesus. So we'll try that one. And then kill five or more monsters during the scenario, or have three or fewer cards. Let's do the five or more monsters. Oh, this is where I've got to discard two cards. Okay, that's what it's saying. At least they're only discarded. hisses you disagree you are right where you want to be
You bash in the door, thinking you've prepared for anything. Before you, however, stands a creature of pure elemental energy, enraged and demonic. It takes you a second to collect yourself. As if animating the dead wasn't enough for these lunatics.
It's clear that you've disrupted some sort of ritual here. These elemental demons belong on an entirely different plane of existence, but the cultists have somehow managed to pull them through to this one. On the altar in the back room, there is a wealth of scribblings on these rituals. Not all of the writing is intelligible, but you get the sense that this crypt is a place of power, once used by an ancient civilization. The ancients tapped the power of the elements to enhance their own lives. And while their exact fate is beyond your knowledge, it clearly didn't end well. Among the scripts, you also find notes on a couple of other places of power in the area. One appears to have seen heavy use with the cult, and the other is marked as being overrun by vicious undead. It looks as though you have the opportunity to either disrupt more of their work, or get in their good graces by helping to clear a threat. Right, earned Burning Mountain. Runus Crypt. Okay, so Runus Crypt and Decaying Crypt were both unlocked from the adventure, from the story. But that uh, Burning... The Burning Mountain, I think that was unlocked. Oh, not the Magnum of Hit, Diamond Mine, there it is. Burning Mountain was from the Shaman. So, that's one thing I really don't like. I really wish that the... That the... When it when you unlock something like that due to a city event or... Or... Uh, road event. I really wish that it would tell you unlocked. Even if it was just small... Like just small print that just pops up. As you do it, when it says, you know, when it said that uh, they gave us 10 gold or 10 or gave us rep or whatever. If like right underneath it, it says unlocked and then shows, the, sh you know, tells you that it unlocks and then shows you now. I mean, I would be OK with that, but unfortunately, it doesn't do that. So, uh, yeah, so we've got we've got the Gloomhaven quest to hunt Jux, uh Jack Sarah down. We've got the magma pits, Runus Crypts. And the cool thing is, it will actually tell you, or it should tell you, yeah, world quest, and then completed quest, and then city quest. That's pretty cool. And let's see. And it, yeah, there it is. Okay. And it tells you whether or not it's a side quest. So if we look at that. It says it right here that it's a side quest in the Watcher Mountains. So that will tell you if you have a quest uh, somewhere in that location. Let's see, unnamed location. Watcher Mountains. And that one's in the city. All right. So I think what we'll do, let's go check out, see what we got here. The ring of skulls. Ooh, it's a summoning ring that summons a skeleton with three health, two movement, two attack. Nice. It's 50 gold. Yeah, I would definitely want that on, on him. Uh, let's see. Oh, he, he leveled up. All right. So what we do is we come here and we hit the level up button all right so heal four range three or oh, and on the bottom it says one ally within range three may recover cards uh one of their uh, one of their burn cards oh wow it gets a burn card back And then stun range, uh, uh, range three, target two. That's pretty nice. Uh, muddle, target all adjacent enemies and then move two. Well, that's pretty good too. All right, so here's the thing. 
when your guys level up. So, unfortunately, you don't know what other cards that you're going to get as you level up unless you cheat and look ahead. And by that, I mean there's websites you can go to that will show you uh, what you get. And in the, in the board game, what we would do is if, if there was something I really wanted, like for instance, let's say we took this one, the stamina booster. And then the next time I went into a dungeon, I seen that I would rather have this one. I would just swap them out. Unfortunately, in the video game, you can't do that. So if you're a purist and you don't want any spoilers, then just pick the card that you 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 want. Because as soon as you hit level three, you're going to get two new cards you can choose one from. Well, you'll get two new cards that are level three cards. And then you'll have those two new cards plus whichever one of these you didn't choose. So you'll have these three cards to choose from. So if you decide later on that, you know, you chose stamina boost, but at level three, you decide you want disorient and flash then you can still get it you can still take it you just don't get either one of the level three cards so if you're a purist you can just do it that way or if you're you know just don't care then you can do it that way but if you really want to uh look at builds or think about builds and what cards you would need for those builds then there is a website which i'll put in the comments that I use for builds and it does have spoilers but it protects you and you have to go one step further to see those spoilers so if you don't want to see like special unlocked characters then that's fine you don't have to click on their deck and and build their their deck but as you unlock characters and you want to check out their cards, which at that point you've already unlocked them. So, I mean, who cares if you see their cards? But it will allow you to build your, or choose the cards every time you level up. It'll allow you to choose the cards that you want for that for that uh, build. Now, I haven't leveled up any of these guys. I haven't gotten that far in the game to level up any of these guys. So, I'm, I only use the I only use it uh, to look at because you can the cool thing about this website is you can actually uh, set it up to where you only see the cards that you've unlocked. I don't necessarily consider myself a purist, but I do like the surprise and the and and things like that when new cards are arriving. So I don't I try not to go ahead and uh, look look ahead either. So, um, yeah, so maybe I am a purist. I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that now. I'm going to choose a, one of these cards, which is probably going to be this one. So when you go up a level, you also get a perk point, which. Oh, we definitely want ignore negative scenario effects for sure. And then we're going to do the same with him. Because he, he got a perk point here. Ignore negative item effects and add a plus one card. So for this, I can get rid of these two minus one cards. And or I can get rid of two minus one cards here. Replace one minus one card with a plus one card. Uh, I think we're going to do this one. That gets rid of those two minus one cards. And then we're going to go and level him up. Kill one adjacent normal enemy. Or move four. And a move four. Move two, attack two. On the next three resources of damage, you suffer no damage instead. So I think that's the card we were going to want. And then we get another perk point, which at that point we're going to remove those two minus one cards. All 
All right, we can't, we don't get that until level three. I still don't think there's anything else that we want there. I mean, I guess we could do that when we get 20, but as of right now, I don't think we care that much. Really tempted to sell those boots off and get Hmm. What do I sell those for? Ten? You know what? I'm gonna. All right. We've got reputation two now. Uh, which still doesn't give us anything. Uh, Gloomhaven wealth is still one. Uh, we've got uh, our Tinker to level two and the Brute to level two. So we are set to go. We've got a lot of stuff unlocked now. Well, and by a lot, I mean we've got a, a, a few things unlocked that we still have the opportunity to take care of. So I think that's going to be it for this, uh, this video. But... Um, yeah, so if you like what you've seen and you want to see more, hit the like button and join the hive by hitting the subscribe button. We'll see you all on a video soon. Bye-bye.